Solvency ratios are kind of the opposite of liquidity ratios. Instead of looking at how much money we have to pay what we owe soon, solvency ratios look at how much money do we have to pay things later. So instead of looking at current liabilities, they're looking at long-term liabilities. Now there are two main types of solvency ratios. You have your debt load and you have your interest coverage. Debt ratios or debt load ratios really kind of look at things that are comparing how much debt you have to assets or equities. And remember, since these are comparing kind of to balance sheet focused accounts, you don't have to average them, but you can if you'd like to. And this is sometimes also called leverage. For example, total debt divided by total assets shows you what percentage of the assets were purchased with debt. And so usually that gives you like a way to evaluate the capital structure or about how much money the company has in their debt version or debt to equity and things like that. But it's in one way or another, it kind of shows you the leverage that they use to buy what they own today. On the other hand, you have your traditional leverage ratio, which is total assets divided by total equity. And remember, you can only buy assets really with if debt or equity. And so anytime that you're looking at equity, you're really looking at the opposite of debt. And so when you have total assets divided by total equity, if it's really high, that means that you have high leverage or a lot of debt. And so a lot of debt's not a bad thing, but it just means that you're really expecting to grow. And so that's why these debt load kind of equations and when it comes down to solvency are not the be all end all of the analysis. They really tell you about how much money the company has to pay back eventually in their debt load, but it doesn't tell you whether that's good or bad. The interest coverage ratios are what really helps you with that. Coverage ratios can help you understand how much money you have or you currently are making that can pay interest off. So remember, anytime that you have debt, you also have interest. And really debt's, like we said, not dangerous by itself. It's the interest payments that can kill you. So you see, if you have a lot of debt and then a super high interest payment, then it becomes very difficult for you to have profits afterwards to reinvest in business and to continue to grow. If you have a lot of debt and low interest payments, then really, I mean, it doesn't really matter that much. That's why when interest rates are low, investors and businesses tend to actually borrow more money because it's a little bit less risky. So coverage ratios really allow you to see how much money you have and you're making that can pay off these interests. So the most common one is your interest coverage ratio, which is just a very easy way of saying EBIT divided by your interest expense. And remember, EBIT just stands for earnings before interest and taxes, and your interest expense is another line item on your income statement, just like kind of earnings are. So all you're looking at in that case is how much profits do you have in order to pay off your interest? Now, if you have anything really above one, you're safe. If it's less than one, it means that your interest payments are higher than the profits you're making, and that leads to bankruptcy really, really fast. However, if you have anything that's in between kind of one and three, it's kind of sketchy. It doesn't mean that you're doing great, but at the same time, you're not doing bad. So just kind of watch out. If it's higher than three, usually you're gonna be fine. If you're making three times the amount of profit that you need to pay off your debts to somebody, you're doing fine because you're gonna have money left over that you can reinvest somewhere else. And EBIT isn't really the be all end all when it comes down to this ratio. You have to use interest expense no matter what, because that's what you're trying to gauge is how much money you have to pay off an interest expense. So it'll always be the denominator. But for your numerator, you can use things like operating profit, or EBITDA, you can even use, you could use things like free cash flow. Even if you really wanted to, you could do net profit plus interest expense. So you do actually have taxes considered as well. Not quite necessary, doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, but really you can do really whatever you want to in this. And so that's a great way to kind of evaluate, okay, what can I change about this ratio to make it kind of more specific to you? And especially companies that have negative profits, which are like startup companies and things like that, you might want to look instead at things like, okay, how much total cash cash do we have divided by the interest expense? So that kind of shows you how much cash on hand you have to pay interest expense. You do the same thing with total assets or cash plus accounts receivable. Kind of going back to those, some of those kind of liquidity ratios that we're looking at about current assets divided by current liabilities, except instead of doing current liabilities this time, you look at interest expense, since that's what you have to pay kind of no matter what. Just remember, anytime you're comparing a balance sheet item to an income statement item, you have to average the balance sheet item. No matter if it's on the top or bottom, no matter what, you have to make sure it's averaged. So just to recap this very quickly, liquidity ratios are all about what you have to pay today. Solvency ratios are all about your debt load, 
and the long-term implications of that debt load. So how much debt do you really have and what ratio does that kind of make up inside your company and your asset base? And on top of that, what interest expense are you paying on that debt load and do you have enough profit annually every year to pay that off? Or at the very minimum, if you're not making profit, do you have enough cash so that you can actually pay that interest expense off without going bankrupt soon? That's what you're trying to get at with solvency ratios.